here we have everything you're gonna need to install your snake obd1 v2 emulator into a p28 or equivalent ecu this one actually is a piezo uh, it's a p06 see over there p06 auto so we'll be converting that adding vtech but I'm not going to go over that in this video. <clears throat> this video, we're just going to go over what you're going to need to install the snake. Um, so you see, there's a C51. These two right here, C52. These are these two capacitors. So this is. For C51 and C52, um, you're going to want to desolder these three middle pins on the CN2 port. And then you have R54 is this blue resistor right here. And once you get it soldered, when you cut the, the legs off from underneath, um, You'll take the remaining piece of this leg and use it to install for J1. So you just route that piece of that leg through J1 and make a little loop. And then that's your jumper. And then this, uh, you got the latch 373 chip, which basically goes in those holes right there. So you desolder those, and that chip goes there. And then uh, Snake gives you this strip of these pins. You'll cut 14 off and then put 14 in that row there. And then cut the other 14 off, put them in that row there for the chip. And then for the Snake data logging, you'll notice um, it has three pins up here which end up going corresponding to these spots here. So you want to take three more of these pins and put them in the center three spots there. And then this white, so then the snake, this is the bottom side, so it would be installed like that. Um, and then this white, uh, standoff thing here goes in this top hole and you're done and that pushes down from the top cover um, I will come back when we got the holes desoldered um, for desoldering if you don't have uh, actual expensive tools like we do you can get by with one of these soldering uh, desoldering tools from Amazon it basically just has a little pump mechanism and you press the button so then you have to heat up with your soldering iron on the spot you're trying to desolder and then push the thing and try to suck the solder out before it cools back down it's not the most ideal way obviously if you're doing any sort of volume if you're just doing one ECU it might work okay um, now we have tools such as this um, desoldering pump gun that does this stuff a lot rap more rapidly and uh, you basically just like see if I can get one of these in camera here just sucks the so it heats up there's a soldering iron and it sucks the stuff out see that you got two three it's as easy as that 
but if you're not doing a lot of these like we do it's not really worth it because this tool is uh three to four hundred dollars so it works great for us um years ago we did just use these to desolder all these but it just takes a lot more time a lot more patience uh, you don't want to heat up the traces too much you can damage the board uh, if you don't do it properly and quickly enough uh, and which will lead to more problems because you'll lift traces or lift pads and then you'll have to have the board repaired uh, because it'll no longer be a spot to connect your to solder anything to Okay, here we have the bottom side of the board. Here we have the C51 and C52 spots. Here's your R54. These ones for the C51 and C52, you can just cut these off close down to the board, throw them away. Uh, these are the ones here that you want to take one of these and then from the top side put it through these two holes, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, you can see this board looks a little dirty right now. This is uh, flux that we use makes it easier to solder and for the solder to actually flow and not just ball up on top of the pins. You don't want to solder this and have it looking like a bunch of balls on top because the solder is not flowed properly. So if that's the case, either your solder, your soldering iron isn't hot enough or your solder doesn't have enough flux or any flux in it and you might need some sort of uh, additional flux like this, which we just add on to here before we start soldering and it melts and helps everything flow. So here's what we got from the top side so far. You got your C51, your C52, your R54. You've got your three pins for your data logging. And you also have your two rows for the chip socket where the snake is actually gonna plug into. Now, as you can see, I took one of these two pieces from the R54 and stuck it in and here in the J1. Right now it's just loose, but I put it through there and then bent the other sides of it so we can turn it over. And now you can see the, get it here, you can see the legs there. Just solder that in, cut those ex, excess pieces off, and that's it. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, there we go. All trimmed up, all the pieces trimmed off of there. Uh, now the flux that's on there, this is a actual no clean flux base, so you don't technically have to clean it off there, but we always do, because we actually can reconformal coat the boards when we're done with it. But if you're not gonna do that, you can either leave it, because it says you don't have to clean it, or you can clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we use 99% isopropyl when we clean all our boards and different things. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, show you what it looks like once it's clean. Here's the board. There's the latch pins soldered in, C51, C52. There's all the chip pins and the data logging pins. Everything's fairly cleaned up. Uh, we go ahead and clean it even more than this. Uh, this ECU is gonna get a full refurbish after this. Uh, this stuff's installed. We're gonna go ahead and take and replace all the capacitors, uh, strip the board and we remove all the capacitors, strip the board, uh, install new capacitors, and then reconformal coat the whole board so it looks like OEM when it's finished. Um, so for now, for the snake part of the install, that's pretty much it. Uh, now you have your data logging header that the snake plugs into and the two chip rows. You got your latch chip, the two capacitors, R54, and your J1 is now installed. Uh, if you come over here and look at the snake, uh, what you get here, basically just flip it over. These pins then go into these sockets, and you have it installed, and I'll be right back. Now that you got the snake installed, this is what it should look like. You should have, uh, should be plugged in properly to the, the three pins here, and make sure it gets plugged in these two rows here, and you don't bend any of the pins. And then once it's fully seated into the ECU and you have this on there, then when the cover goes on, the cover will hold down on that standoff there. Um, now what you need to do in order to get to the USB 
you need to mark the inside of your case where the USB port is with a Sharpie and then cut that, get a hole in that location and then you'll be set to use your ECU with the Snake V2.